so much ugliness in this world, so much insanity. It's time for instant classics. I mentioned that the world is both a crazy place and it is a beautiful place. No artist in the history of the world iconograph is more iconographically associated with madness and beauty than Vincent van Gogh. So this is, my friends, Vincent van Gogh week on the Dr. Duke Show. We're gonna look at five paintings. We're gonna look at the work of this genius man. We're gonna consider uh, the mental stress he was under and how the genius of humanity to take suffering and tragedy and to somehow, through grinding suffering and effort, turn it into some of the most beautiful art anyone has ever conceived. So take a look at the first image for today. This is a self-portrait of Vincent van Gogh. It's one of the last, it's either the last or the second to last self-picture that uh, van Gogh produced in his life. In fact, he over a 10-year period, he painted himself over 32 times. He painted himself because he often lacked the money to pay his models. Art historians are not quite sure if this self-portrait or the famous one with him with his ear bandaged is actually the final self-portrait, but this one is from 1889, the last year of his life. Van Gogh sent this picture to his younger brother, Theo, his art dealer, and with an accompanying, ready, accompanying letter that read, quote, Theo, you will need to study the picture for a time. I hope you will notice that my facial expressions have become much calmer although my eyes have the same insecure look as before, or so it appears to me, unquote. And take a look at this, one of these final pictures. I mean, it is a penetrating look in the eyes of Vincent van Gogh. You see a lifetime of suffering and of alienation in those eyes. For Vincent to look at those eyes and say, those eyes reflect the insecurities is an understatement more than just the insecurities of life. You can see the, non, the tormenting nonstop pressure he's been under his whole life to create and then to deal with uh, the inability of the people and the uh, critics to recognize his genius. Uh, but he looks calm, as he said. The really interesting, though, if you look around, look at his hair and look at the swirls that make up the background. I mean, for all of that penetrating fixed look, you can see the chaos that surrounds him, those beautiful blues and lavenders and grays, uh, those swirly lines that seem to surround him. It's as if he's caught in some kind of a fog. And uh, given his potential bipolarity or some other uh, un fully undiagnosed uh, mental issues that he had, that swirling haze of gray and blue and lavender really does suggest, doesn't it, how deeply, deeply Vincent was lost in his own inability to overcome himself. And he, at this point, he had already checked himself for this last year of his life into a sanitarium, a mental hospital. Voluntarily, he did it. And he wrote to Theo repeatedly, the only thing that stops me from going mad, the only thing that stops me from fully losing my mind is painting. And so this year of his life, 1889, four of the five paintings I'm gonna show you this week are from the last year of his life, 1889. And those four are among the five greatest paintings we re ever got from Vincent. So it's remarkable how the more he suffered, the more tragic a situation, the more pain he was in, the more he painted. And the more he painted, the better, the better his paintings got. It's really something unique about human beings. I said it at the beginning of this segment. We are the only creatures in the history of the universe, as far as we know, who can take misery and suffering, can take tragedy to find our lives and our futures and our values and our worldview to be completely destroyed. And yet, and yet, rather, to, to, in the process of suffering over this, those terrible revelations, can transmute suffering and misery into to art. That's a, a transformational thing. It's one of the things that makes human beings most like God, the ability to take suffering and misery, to transpose it, and on the other side, produce beauty, art, and truth.